Cruise lines have been hit hard, as you know. Bookings and earnings estimates are dropping right along with the stocks. Each of the nation's 10 busiest cruise ship ports handle more than a million passengers a year, the top three being Miami, Port Canaveral, and Port Everglades, all in Florida in 2018. Almost 14 million passengers passed through those three ports alone. Patrick Scholes analyzes the industry for SunTrust. Robinson Humphrey joins us tonight. Patrick, it's good to see you. Thank you. Mentioned uh, the damage that's been done to these businesses, to the stocks thus far. How bad does it get? Well, it's we, we look for an inflection point where bookings coming in are begin to be less bad. Um, and specifically, uh, through the end of last week, we saw for the cruise lines, bookings down about 35 percent year over year um, for the entire week uh, last year. And these are for future travel. Uh, interestingly, that continued to decelerate uh, through the weekend and yesterday down close to 50 percent. So unfortunately, we can't say that we've seen uh, a bottom as far as uh, cruise line bookings uh, are at you, this moment. Could, could you say the same thing about a bottom in the, sh in the stocks themselves? Correct. Correct. And, and for that, we pull out the 08, 09 playbook um, to look for second derivatives of what we would call getting less bad. Um, things may be downright awful, horrendous, but if bookings next week are a bit less bad than this week and next month and so on, uh, the stocks usually have sold off so much um, uh, before that, that they tend to be very good buying opportunities uh, mm. at that point. What about the dividends? How much are they at risk and by whom would, would be the first perhaps maybe to cut? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, interestingly, we cut our numbers quite severely for the three cruise lines. Uh, of the three cruise lines, two of them pay dividends. Uh, the first is going to be uh, Carnival. And the company targets about 40 to 50 percent of its earnings uh, to be paid out in a dividend. Now, based on our reduced numbers, and I don't want to come up here and tell you that that's going to be the final cut uh, that we make to our numbers. We just don't know. Uh, we have them paying out close to 75 percent of their earnings per share as far as a dividend. At that level, definitely the sustainability of the dividend becomes uh, uh, becomes in question. You're, um, you're already getting to the point where, where some are mentioning the B word, as in bailout. What do you think the government could do, and what do you think will happen? <sighs> That's a great question. It's uh, one I've certainly talked with a lot of clients uh, about. Now, one thing uh, your viewers may not know, um, you know, this is going to be different than, say, the bailout from General Motors. Um, unlike General Motors, the cruise lines are not U.S. companies. They don't pay U.S. taxes. For the most part, their employees are not U.S. citizens. And they also don't build the ships or the shipyards are not... Uh, uh, in the United States. And that's certainly uh, countering where GM, uh, you know, had uh, a U.S. company, U.S. taxes when they were profitable, U.S. employees. I think it's going to make it much more difficult for the government uh, to step in and really give some sort of financial aid. Um, you know, it's possible maybe they could back some loans or favorable interest rates, uh, uh, things like that. But uh, it, this is not uh, going to be terribly easy in that situation. Yeah, no taxes paid in the U.S. going to be a much harder sell to the American people. Yeah. Patrick, we appreciate your time as always, and I know we'll talk to you again soon as we watch this situation unfold.